Hi everyone, welcome to Weed and Secret. Today I've got some tips and tricks on how to make the most perfect wax melts that are super strong smelling. So what I've got here is I've got a large pan and I've got some wax just melting on the ring. I've got it on the ring on the lowest possible setting. It is an electric hob. Um, and it's on number one. So I just place my wax in there because I do need to, to melt a lot of wax all in one go. So the microwave's not big enough and I haven't got a double boiler big enough either. But this melting it on the ring is just the equivalent of having a special wax melter that is on a very low temperature. So that's tip one, melt the wax to between 80 and 95 degrees centigrade. Okay, so the temperature is at 87 degrees centigrade. That's about 180 Fahrenheit. We're gonna dispense this into a heat safe jug. I'm just gonna half fill the jug. You don't want to, to overfill it. I'm going to leave this jug on the ring at number one to keep that warm so I can keep coming back to it. My next tip, tip is if you get any um, soap on the side of your jug just take a heat gun, turn it on low and it melts all that wax from the side of the jug and allow it to run down into the rest of the wax that you've got. And next tip is, this is when you want to add your colour and any glitter that you want to add. So I'm using um, the Becro pink dye chips that I got from Supplies for Candles. I want a nice strong pink here. So I'm going to add quite a few in there and they dissolve beautifully. That's the reason you put them into your hot wax because that, that's the best way to dissolve them. Just give those a whisk in until they've all dissolved or just stir it with a spoon if you want to. Okay, so at around 75 degrees centigrade, which is 167 Fahrenheit, you want to add your fragrance and glitter um, between 8 and 10% to get the best, strongest wax melts. But what you must do is you must check with your fragrance or supplier because some fragrance oils are that strong you can only put 5% in. And the one that I'm using right now, Snow Fairy from Silk Magic or Oasis Oils, that is one of them. So I'm only putting 5% fragrance in this, in this wax melt. And we're going to add lots of gorgeous hot pink glitter from Glitter Express which is neon way to pink again give it a nice stir in leave it for at least a minute to warm through uh, but it might take longer than that to get down to your desired temperature your desired pouring temperature Okay, my next pro tip is that I recommend instead of pouring from one of these 
larger jugs pour from a pyrex jug or a heat safe glass jug uh, the reason being they've got a fantastic lip for pouring perfect wax melts into small areas if you use if you're making very small wax melts obviously these are larger than norm uh, but that's my next tip is to use a pyrex jug and then tip after that is to warm your pyrex jug in the microwave for 30 seconds to a minute i actually heat mine for one full minute and um, before i pour the wax from this jug into this jug and then that stops any wax solidifying on the outskirts of your jug on the inside uh, if it's nice and warm it'll keep the, the wax that's touching the glass it'll keep it melted for you okay my next pro tip is the temperature at which to pour so I've got my jug nice and warm here we're just going to take the temperature we're at 59 so we need to get a move on so 59 degrees centigrade is 140 fahrenheit so we're going to give her a good stir get all the glitter and that whizzing around and then we're going to dispense the wax into the pyrex jug and then we're going to pour pour some melts and i always keep an eye on the side of the the mold as the wax is rising up the mold and that's when i know when to stop is when we get to exactly the point that we want to get to I've learnt for me that pouring any hotter than 60 so say 65 I am getting frosting on the melts and it just looks unsightly so these are all the little tips and things that I've learnt since I started making wax melts I hope they'll help you to make better wax melts. Again, we're just going to use that heat gun to melt any wax that might have stuck to the side of the jug because even though you've warmed your jug that is still going to happen somewhat but it really reduces the risk And then again, when we get right down to the bottom of the jug, there'll probably be some wax stuck to the bottom. So we'll just use the heat gun again to melt that. And then we'll use that wax for samples. So we've also got wax in here so as you can see it's set because we've been using this wax at a very low temperature so I'm just taking the heat gun again and I'm melting all that wax that's stuck to the side of the jug again these plastic jugs are heat safe jugs surprising 
how much wax you actually get just from doing that melting. I'm going to take a silicon spoon to scrape all of that off the sides just makes your washing up a lot easier the less wax that's on the container and then with the glass jug we're going to melt again to make sure we get every little scrap of wax out of there um, and it's usable for something at least it's almost like we had no wax left but as you can see we've actually got quite a lot so for the sample sizes I'm not actually filling up the tray And they'll go out with samples. Right, my next pro tip is if you've got uneven surfaces, like you can see along the edges here, take your heat gun again, let it warm up, and then just run it over the top. If you've got dips in your wax, it's because you've poured your wax far too hot. Same, this, which usually happens with candles, to be honest. And then this will level out your wax and just make them lovely and flat on the bottom of the, of the wax melt. Just helps with the packaging. And for my next tip, if you're making multiple uh, melts and you're going to need your uh, moulds, you know, in the next hour, say, uh, to pour some more, pop them in the freezer. And if you have multiple moulds like this, pop them in for about 45 minutes. Just set your timer and off you go. Um, if you just have one mould, however, um, so not multiples built all, all one on top of the other, just put them in for 15 minutes to 30 minutes. As for these, 45 minutes to an hour. I'm doing 45 minutes, which seems to work very well for me. All right, my next tip is unmoulding. So if you go into one mould you melt, just pull the silicon away, just loosen it around all the edges and allow the air to seep in. Just bend it like so, that'll release your melts. And do that with all of them so all of the edges are loose. And then on the back, with your finger, as you one more the melt, just press gently on each one, and this should ensure a nice, neat unmolding. Now, with these chocolate molds, um, because the corners are so sharp in there, my next tip is. Because you're probably nearly always going to get a little bit of wax stuck in some of the corners. So just take a cuticle tip, a wooden cuticle tip, and you can scrape any leftover wax out of there, like so. And then this will ensure 
your moulds are ready for your next pour because I don't suggest that you wash your moulds after you've used them if you want to reuse them immediately um, because they'll need drying out thoroughly before you reuse them. Now if you do wash them, um, I have a plate warmer on my cooker and so I'll pop them on there for at least an hour to thoroughly dry out. The great thing with your moulds is because you're pouring fragrance wax into them they start to smell absolutely beautiful so when they're on the warmer they fragrance your whole kitchen. Alright another tip I have for you is sometimes after you've unmoulded you're going to get uh, bits of wax stuck in the corners so just take a, a wooden cuticle tool and you'll just be able to scrape all those extra bits out of the corners like so just tip it upside down tap all that excess out and the next tip for you is you can see we have frosting actually left in the mould so to clean it up ready for your next pour just take a heat gun again and run that over your mould and as you can see that tidies up obviously that frosting wax is still in your mould but it tidies it up for your next pour so that your next pour is nice and clean again and my final pro tip is just to let you stack your wax melts up if you can't stack them just store them somewhere and let them cure for 24 hours and then you'll be able to pack them okay I hope this video was very useful for you if you want to set out making wax melts I want to thank all of you for watching as usual and don't forget we'll have another video coming up very very soon thanks for watching bye bye for now